I am so excited. When Ma got up here, I did not see that coming. I don't even know if I can speak today because I'm just so, three of my children, three made a decision to get baptized. I'm just, I'm without words, I tell you. I, this has been my prayer for a long time. You know, I pray for my children that were baptized to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray for my children that had not yet made that decision to make that decision, you know. And so I'm just, I'm thanking Yahweh today. I'm so excited about the impending ceremony. Um, it's interesting how Yahweh brings a message about to me because what I do is I start praying about what you would have me to speak on and I kind of wait to see what opens up for me or whatever because I always want to make sure it's an on-time message. See, I don't know where you guys are at, what you're thinking, what you're doing, what's happening in your lives, where you need to be encouraged or I don't know that, but Yahweh knows, right? Yahweh knows what needs to be said and when it needs to be said. So I kind of don't want to get in myself and say, well, I'm going to speak on this or I'm going to speak on that. I want to wait and see what Yahweh gives me to speak on. So this time, he dropped it in my spirit to speak on baptism. So I thought, baptism? Okay, you know. So I started to work it out and get my scriptures together and put it on paper. And every which way I looked at it, it was like a teaching. Now, I'm very comfortable preaching the message, okay, because that's what I've been practicing. That's what I've been doing all this time, and I feel like I'm, you know, growing in my gift, and I'm comfortable there. So when I get a message that I kind of have to teach, I'm intimidated. I'm not so comfortable. I'm coming out of my comfort zone. So I'm trying to think of all kinds of ways to change this message. And Micah, he's like, you preach what Yahweh gave you to preach. If it's a teaching, you teach it. Whatever Yahweh gave you, that's what you want to do. You don't want to get away from it. So baptism is one of those things that can kind of go in a whole lot of directions. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a whole lot that you can say about baptism. But this is what I believe that Yahweh put on my heart to speak about today. And I basically want to encourage the young people which I'm feeling like, do I even need to do this at this point? <laughs> we got a beautiful testimony from Maya that basically sums up the whole message. We, like, got the sermon from her testimony, you know? Like, I'm sure the young people were listening and you heard what she said. So I don't know. This is kind of just following behind Maya, you know what I mean? But that's how the spirit of Yahweh works. I didn't know Maya was going to do that. I had no idea she was going to say what she said. And I had no idea that she had made a decision to follow Yeshua. But that's how the spirit of Yahweh works. So this discussion about baptism is kind of controversial. And the reason it's controversial is because it has caused a lot of division in the church as a whole. So my goal today is to try to bring a little bit of clarity to the subject and some understanding for our young people who have not yet made that decision, I would ask that you pay special attention because this is something that you guys need to seriously consider. Now, what makes it controversial is everything about it. Churches are divided over who should be baptized. I mean, there's churches that believe infants should be baptized, while other churches will say, Infants should not be baptized. It's a personal decision. You have to be able to make a profession of faith. You have to understand what it is you're doing. So there's division about who should be baptized. There's division about how you should be baptized. There's churches that believe sprinkling a little water on you is good. And then there's other churches that believe you need to be fully immersed. Now, in this assembly, we believe in immersion because the Greek word baptisto, which is baptism, means to immerse or to plunge, to put asunder. So there's division on how it's supposed to be done. There's even division on whether or not baptism is necessary. A lot of churches teach that baptism is no longer necessary. It's not essential. And other churches believe that it is very significant and essential in the life of a believer. And so the controversy goes on and on and on and on. And I believe it will be debated until Yeshua returns. Nobody's going to concede here because everybody has a scripture. Now, I hear a lot of mainstream churches that preach this faith-only message. 
So when you get into this discussion with them, they'll throw a scripture at you. They'll say, you know, John 3, 16 says, For y'all so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, that says, he that believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It doesn't say anything about baptism in that scripture. That's what they'll say. All I got to do is believe. As long as I believe, I shall not perish, and I shall have everlasting life. But what's interesting to me, this scripture, like so many other scriptures in the Bible, people will pull a verse out, and they don't read the context of it. They don't understand all the scripture around it. Because if you keep on reading, John 3.16 is Yeshua speaking to a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus asked him, what must I do to be saved? And Yeshua tells him, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding that verse of whether that's speaking about baptism or not. So I'm not even going to get into that. I'm taking us past John 3.16. You keep on reading. When Yeshua gets finished talking to Nicodemus, and you know when he's done because the red letter text turns back to black. Verse 22, six verses later, it talks about Yeshua baptizing. So this belief is followed up by baptism. So when they say that, I can't receive that. I say, well, what are you doing with the scripture in Acts? Acts 2.38 that says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua Messiah, for what? For the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I say, that's what I believe. I believe that repentance and baptism, they're necessary. They are essential. They are a part of that faith. And then they'll come back and they'll say, but what about the scripture in Ephesians? Where it says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's by grace. See, we're under the dispensation of grace now. It's a faith thing. See, you talking about repentance and baptism, that's you trying to add works to the faith. It's just faith. It's not faith plus works. And so the battle rages on. Scripture versus scripture versus scripture. Now, we've all been here, and not just on this issue, but on many issues, because every doctrinal belief has some type of scripture backing it up. So I got my scriptures, you got your scriptures, you present what you got, I present what my got, and we got this back and forth and back and forth. But we know and hopefully understand that the word of Yahweh is divinely inspired, that the word of Yahweh is infallible, that Yahweh does not, he cannot, he will not contradict himself. That one scripture will not negate another scripture. See, somehow, some way, it all goes together. It's one fluid thought. So, anytime there appears to be a contradiction, I believe the error is on our part. People, you know, we have interpreted it wrong. We both can't be right, right? So, somebody's interpretation is a little bit off. So recognizing that, when I hear these churches preaching this faith-only message, I can agree with it to a certain extent. I can receive that because I believe if you ask the Apostle Paul if he was saved by faith, he would most certainly say yes. If you ask me, Denise, are you saved by faith? Yes, I am. But see, I believe that Paul has the proper understanding that faith is more than just simply believing. Biblical faith demands obedience to the word of Yahweh. Biblical faith is all-encompassing. See, it's a faith that should move you into action. We learn this in the Gospel 101, the ABCs of faith. Action based on belief with the confidence that whatever will be. Faith, active, living more than just a head knowledge or belief. It's all a faith thing. Now, just so I can bring this to the, to the younger people who I'm trying to appeal to today, I'm going to take it back to the basics. The scripture says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So, 
the first thing that happens is you hear the word. You hear the gospel message. You hear that you are a sinner. You hear that the wages of sin is death, that your flesh is enmity with Yahweh. You hear this. You hear that Yahweh, almighty, creator of heaven and earth, maker of all things, omnipotent, omniscient, Yahweh, in his mercy, in his grace, has made a way for us to be reconciled back to him by sending his son, Yeshua, to come and walk among us in the flesh, to die on Calvary's tree in your place, to take on your penalty, to shed his blood for the remission of your sin, to rise again on the third day and go back on the glory and prepare the place for those that accept that atoning sacrifice for their sin. You hear the gospel message preached. Now, after the hearing comes the belief. Now, everybody's not going to believe what they heard. So I'm not talking to those. I'm talking to those of us that have heard the gospel message, and we believe it. We believe it to be true. This belief is where faith begins. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of which is not seen. So when somebody comes and starts telling you about this almighty God that we can't see, sent his only begotten son that none of us seen in the flesh, that he came and he died a horrible death on Calvary, which we did not see. We don't even know anybody who's seen or says so faith, right? It's faith. We got to believe it without seeing it. You know, we have to believe that we can be reconciled back to Yahweh, that this is our way to get back in right standing before Yahweh. This is our way to avoid the wages of sin is death, to avoid that penalty, to have the everlasting life that the scripture speaks about. Amen? So faith begins after hearing. Okay? So we got hearing, we got belief. But that belief is faith. Now, once I believe it, I have to do a couple things. First, I have to accept Yeshua into my life. I have to accept his sacrifice, his shed blood for the remission of my sin. I have to accept it. And then once I accept it, I have to confess my sins before Yah. I have to give it all to him. And then I have to repent of those sins and convert, repent and convert, turn from my wicked ways. And then I must be baptized into the family, into the body of Yeshua. Now, what I want you guys to understand is that all of these things, accepting what he has done for you, confession of your sins, repenting of what you've done and converting and being baptized into the body. All of these things are not in addition to faith. It's not faith plus anything. It's all faith. All of those things are an expression of my faith. Faith is an action thing. Faith is going to move me to walk in obedience to Almighty Yah. It is a faith thing. I can agree with them to that extent. See, there's no contradiction. There's no fight between faith and baptism. It's all faith. Me putting my trust in Yeshua and walking in obedience. See, we have to remember what the definition of sin is. Sin is simply transgression of the law. Okay? Sin is transgression of the law. We are required to walk in obedience. In Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, this is Yeshua speaking to his apostles, and he's about to send them out. People refer to this as the Great Commission. He says to them, All authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go then and make disciples of all the nations, 
baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days to the close and consummation of the age. Amen. Now, Yeshua starts that by saying all power. Not some power, not a limited power, but all power. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to the nations. I want you to preach the gospel message. I want you to make disciples. And once you make disciples, I want those disciples to be baptized. And I want them to do everything that I've commanded you to do. So it's safe to assume that if you consider yourself to be a disciple of Yeshua or a follower, if that's a better word, if you are a follower of Yeshua, then you need to follow the model here and you need to be baptized and you need to be taught all the things that he commanded and you need to line your life up with those things because this is Yeshua speaking. This is Yeshua telling you what you must do. You must be baptized into the body of Yeshua. It's all faith, saints. It's all faith. If you go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27, for you are all the children of Elohim by faith in Yeshua Messiah. We're all the children of the Most High by faith. It's all by faith, right? The very next verse, for as many of you as have been baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. Faith responded to with baptism. By faith you are a son or a daughter of the Most High. But when you get baptized, you are clothed in the righteousness of Yeshua. When Yahweh looks at me, it's not me that he will see, but the righteousness of his son, Yeshua. Is Paul contradicting himself? Or do these verses somehow go together? See, there's no contradiction between faith and baptism. How about in Acts chapter 16? Now, this is when Paul and Silas are in jail. And there's an earthquake. And the doors fly open and their chains are loosed. And the jailer wakes up and he thinks that all the prisoners have escaped. And so he gets a sword and he's about to kill himself because it's his responsibility to watch these prisoners. He's supposed to be guarding over these prisoners. And as he's about to take his own life, Paul says to him in verse 28, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on Yeshua Messiah and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now here we go again. This is one of the verses that they'll say, See? All I got to do is believe. What must I do to be saved? I must believe in Yeshua Messiah. I believe, so I'm good to go. But they got to keep on reading. People don't want to keep on reading. Let's read two more verses. And they spake unto him the word of Yahweh and to all that were in his house. So what did they do? They taught him the gospel message. They educated them. They taught them. They, that's the teach part, okay? And guess what happened after they heard the gospel message? And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was what? Baptized he and all of his straight away. Again, baptism following belief. Faith in action. Faith in action. It's all a faith thing. See, I want you to understand that there is no contradiction over and over and over again. I could sit here all day and just give you example after example after example of believers being baptized after they heard the message. Over and over again. Because it's not enough to just believe. Because guess what? Satan believes. He knows Yahweh is real. 
It's not faith for him because he's seen him. He knows. He knows. He believes. Is salvation his? No. It's not his. It's not enough to just believe. It's not enough to just accept what he's done for you. you got to continue on in obedience. You must repent. What kills me about the mainstream church is they have this thing called the sinner's prayer. This the sinner's prayer gets on my nerves. I'll tell you why. Because people think if they just say this, they're fine. They can keep on living their life any way they want to, engaging in all manner of sin. But I'm saved because I said the sinner's prayer, because I accepted Yeshua. I'm saved. There is a process. We are required to walk in obedience. The funny thing about repentance is there is no salvation without repentance. There is no salvation without repentance. But they're not teaching repentance anymore. What, what is that? What is that? And I'll tell you why they don't want to teach repentance anymore. It's not that they don't believe you need to repent. But once they say you must repent, they put themselves in a bad situation when you try to tell them that the law is not done away with. Because you can't have it both ways. Why do you need to repent? It's because you sin. What is sin? Transgression of Yahweh's law. But if we're in this dispensation of grace and law is done away with, then I can't sin. If I don't sin, I don't need to repent. You can't have repentance without sin. That's why they don't teach it. But the interesting thing is they do teach that you have to accept Yeshua. Is that acceptance a work? Isn't that a little bit further than belief? Believe and accept. Confess, repent, be baptized. It's all faith. It's all faith. Can't have it both ways. Why is your acceptance of what Yeshua done not a work? Belief is here and acceptance is here. What is that? Faith plus work. You know what I'm saying? They could call it work if they want, but James is clear. Faith without works is dead faith. There's something required of us. We must walk in obedience. The focus in baptism doesn't have anything to do with me. It doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with what Yeshua has done for me. It's acknowledging my acceptance of the blood he shed on my behalf on Calvary for the remission of my sin. Baptism is a public declaration that I belong to the Most High, that I am not who I used to be, that I am no longer being mastered by my flesh. I am no longer allowing sin to rule in my life, but I have a new master, and his name is Yeshua. And that's what baptism is about. I am identifying myself with this group of people. Now, I want you to understand something. In the early church, Christians were persecuted. They were being put to death for this faith. So for you to make a public declaration that you are like these people, identifying yourself with Christians, you put your life on the line, your family's lives on the line. You were being persecuted, having to flee. You were in danger, but they were doing it. Their faith was such that they weren't concerned about consequences like that. I believe and I want all that Yahweh has for me. And they were baptized into the body of Yeshua. Now I'm telling you, baptism is like a demonstration of your faith. If you look at 1 Peter 3, I'm going to read this in the Amplified because I just love how the Amplified breaks this down. 1 Peter 3, verse 21. And baptism, which is a figure of their deliverance, delivered from the penalty of the wages of sin, delivered from that sinful flesh that was enmity with Yahweh, delivered from that old way of thinking, from that deceitful heart, 
delivered. Baptism delivers you from those things. Delivered does now also save you from inward questionings and fears, not by the removing of outward body filth, but by providing you with the answer of a good and clear conscience, inward cleanness and peace before Yahweh. Now, this is the part. Because you are demonstrating what you believe to be yours through the resurrection of Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. I am demonstrating what I believe to be mine. I know that through the resurrection of my Savior Yeshua, everlasting life belongs to me. Everlasting life is mine. That's what it says. I am demonstrating what I believe is mine based on the resurrection of Yeshua. That's what baptism is about. It's a public declaration. I am his. He is mine. Hallelujah. That's what it is. I want you to understand. When I got married, I stood before my family, my friends, and I declared my love for Mike. I said, I'm making a commitment to love, honor, and cherish this man to the day I die. I made a commitment to what? A new way of life. See, it was no longer going to be me. It was going to be we. Baptism is similar. It's a ceremony where I'm pledging my allegiance to Yahweh Most High. I'm going to stand before my friends and my church family, and I'm going to make a vow to follow Yahweh, to love Yahweh, to keep his commandments, to let my will die so that his will might reign in this vessel. I'm making a public declaration. I'm committing to a new way of life. It's no longer about me. It's about he. Amen? Amen. Baptism is significant. In the life of a believer, significant. It's not something that should be entered into lightly. And you should understand what it is you're saying when you say, I want to be baptized into the body of Yeshua. I remember my baptism. I'll never forget it because it changed my life. I was pregnant with Maya. I was not saved. Micah was. And that's a whole nother message. But I thought that I had miscarried her. I was having a lot of pain and bleeding, and I got ambulance to the hospital. And the doctor checked me and said, I'm sorry, Denise, but you had a miscarriage. And I thought, oh, you know. And then Micah, he's standing in a corner. He's praying out loud. He was at work when this happened, so he had on his police uniform. So he's standing out. People are looking at him. And I'm embarrassed because I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm not saved. I'm not in the Word. I don't have understanding of these things. Doctor said, I had a miscarriage. Let's go home. He's standing there. He's praying out loud. And in the midst of his praying, he begins to rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And he comes over to me and he says, Denise. And he's all excited. And he got this big smile. He's like, the baby's okay. And in that moment, I'm looking at him and I'm like, poor Micah. I mean, I'm like pitying him. I'm like, he just, he doesn't want to receive it. But Micah, look at the chart. The chart says spontaneous abortion. That's what a miscarriage is. Look at the chart. The doctor, doctor said. He's like, niece, Yahweh said the baby's okay. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, this man is straight crazy. Now, you got two doctors, professionals, educated people actually physically examined me, told me I had a miscarriage. So he says, well, we're going to stay here until our doctor comes. We stayed down there for hours, for a long time, waiting for my doctor to come. My doctor comes, he's like, Denise, what's the problem? I said, you know, I had a miscarriage. He said, yeah, that's what it says on your chart. I said, he just refuses to receive it. He don't believe it. He wants you to check me. He said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will go and do an ultrasound, and that way he can see for himself that there's no baby. We'll let him see it for himself. Then he can't dismiss it. I'm like, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So we go upstairs to get an ultrasound. Long story short, Mike is standing behind him. The screen's facing him. I can't see it. 
Micah's pointing at the screen. Is this the baby right here? Is, is, is this the heart beating right here? He starts rejoicing. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. And I'm just like, are you serious? Micah said, you got to have faith, niece. Yahweh said, you got to have faith. In that moment, I knew I wanted what he had. I want that. I want God to talk to me like that. I want that kind of assurance. I want peace no matter how it looks on the outside. I want that. I said, I'm getting baptized. Now, at the time, I wasn't a Bible scholar. I didn't know a whole lot of scripture. I, didn't, I wasn't even going to church regularly. But I wanted what he had. And so I looked to see what did I need to do? What do I need to do to get that kind of faith? You must repent, be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. I told Sylvester, I want to get baptized. I got baptized when I was pregnant with mine. I didn't wait till I had the baby. I wanted it right now today. I want that right now. And we didn't have a church, so we didn't have the baptismal. So we had to drive up to Moraine State Park. I had to get in a dirty lake. I was very bougie at that time. My vanity was great at that time. The water was dirty. But I wanted it. I wanted it so bad. And I went in that lake, and I got dunked in that nasty water. <laughs> and I came up born again. A new creation. That was the beginning of my covenant relationship with Yeshua. A change took place. And it wasn't the water. It wasn't the ceremony. Yahweh was making a change on the inside. And that was just an outward demonstration of my decision to connect myself to him. Baptism is the beginning of your journey. You get baptized into the body. It's like a rite of passage. An outward act that shows the regeneration that's taking place. When I got married, I didn't just make a public vow. I put on a wedding ring. And the ring is a symbol of my union with Micah. I wear it willingly as an outward sign so that everybody will know that something has taken place on the inside, this heart, this heart inside of me belongs to somebody. I've given my heart to this man. It's his. I'm not available. I want the world to know. It all belongs to him. It's an outward sign. And baptism is similar. It's an outward sign of your union with Yeshua. It shows that your life is taken. You've been bought with a price. It's no longer your life. It's his life. You want the world to know. It's symbolism. I want everybody to know that from this day forward, I will stand for Yahshua. I will die daily so that he can live and reign and rule through me. I want everybody to know it. It's not a secret. It's a joyous occasion and celebration. See, when we get baptized, we are identifying ourselves with what Yeshua has done on Calvary for us. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 1. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that Yahweh's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Yeshua Messiah were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death so that just as Messiah was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. For if we had become one with him 
by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for Yahweh. We know that our old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. For when a man dies, he is freed, loosed, delivered from the power of sin among men. Now, if we have died with Yeshua, we believe that we shall also live with him, because we know that Messiah, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. For by the death he died, he died to sin, ending his relation to it once and for all. In the life that he lives, he is living to Yahweh in unbroken fellowship with him. Even so, consider yourselves also dead to sin and your relation to it broken, but alive to Elohim, living in unbroken fellowship with him in Yeshua Messiah. Let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies to make you yield to its cravings and be subject to its lust and evil passions. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to Elohim as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to Elohim, presenting them as implements of righteousness. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under law as slaves, but under grace as subjects of Yahweh's favor and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is baptism right there. Because the water represents the cleansing of sin. It's a visual representation that all of our sin, all of it, regardless of how vile, filthy, wicked, perverse, it doesn't matter, all of it, and regardless of how unworthy I might feel in the eyes of Yahweh, all of that sin has been completely washed away through the shed blood of Yeshua. And I've been cleansed of all unrighteousness. See, when you go down in the water, that represents the death of you. That's death to the old way of life, the old way of living, to your old self, death to it. And what do we do with something dead? We bury it. Bury it means we leave it behind. So we're going to go down in the water. We're going to leave all this sinful flesh, which is enmity with Yahweh, behind. All those ways of thinking, those evil, wicked, perverse thoughts, vices, lustful cravings and desires, pride, all these things that hinder our relationship with Yahweh, we're going to bury them in that watery grave. We're going to leave it all behind. We're going to say, that sinful, godless person you knew before is dead. She no longer exists. My sinful habits, dead. My godless attitude, dead. My selfish desires, dead. Satan's control over my life, done. The enmity between my flesh and Almighty Yahweh, done. It's all done. It's all in there. It's in that watery grave. And as I am lifted up out of that water, I am being raised from the dead into newness of life, a new life, a new name, a new way of thinking, new habits, new attitudes, new desires. I got the law of Yahweh written on my heart, and I am entering into that new covenant, that covenant relationship with him. He becomes my identity. See, when I got married, I took on Micah's name. I put off my name. I took on his name. When you get baptized, you are taking on the name of Yah, my people who are called by my name. You're his. You're a new creation, born again. You have identified yourself with Yeshua in the likeness of his death. So you will also live in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. 
Eternal life is mine, just like it's his. And this is not just some future thing. It's a very present reality. You can live in resurrection power right now. That's that life and that more abundantly, amen? We got that right now. And Yeshua set the example for us to follow. Yeshua got baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Now, this, just, this right here excites me. Can you imagine the awesome display of Yahweh's glory when all three persons of the Godhead are seen at the same time? Are you following me? We got Yeshua the Son in the water. And then the heavens open up, and Yahweh the Father says, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then the Spirit descends on him like a dove. You got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all present, all at the same time. Can you imagine the magnificence of that? And Yeshua said, I'm being baptized to fulfill all righteousness. I don't think it's any different for us today. See, when we make that declaration, I know that Yahweh is saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is my daughter in whom I am well pleased. He's rejoicing because now you're willing to love him the way that he loves you. You're willing to be committed to him the way he's committed to you. You're going to be faithful to him the way he's been faithful to you. And a lot of times, people come up out of the water speaking in tongues, which is a sign that they have received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We get baptized to fulfill our righteousness as well because we're walking in obedience, which is what's required of us. So if you've accepted Yeshua and not been baptized, the question is, why not? What are you waiting for? Baptism is not for some believers. It's for all believers, all disciples, all the followers, all of those who understand and made a decision to follow his call should be baptized into the body. The scripture shows that there's like an immediate thing that happens after people hear the word. They hear it and they respond to it by being baptized. It's not like that today. We have these never-ending engagements. See, when me and Micah got engaged, it was a very private thing. But then we went and told the world. And then we declared it publicly by getting married. How many of you are engaged to Yeshua but have not yet sealed the deal? Sometimes engagements break. They don't make it to the ceremony. We let too many excuses get in the way. We say things like, I don't want everybody to look at me. Or people might laugh at me. Or I don't want to get my hair wet. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The saints who are going to witness your baptism, who are going to witness you dying to self and being born again, a new creation, are not going to laugh at you. They're going to rejoice. They're going to celebrate. They're going to thank Yahweh that another soul's been saved. I want you to understand something. These excuses pale in comparison to what Yeshua has done for you. He didn't want to be laughed at. He was. He didn't want to be mocked. He was. He didn't want to be lashed and spit upon, punched and kicked, nailed to a cross. He didn't want any of it. But he did it for you. He gave it all, every single drop of his blood he shed for you. These excuses do not cut it. I 
want to say this too. For you young people who got baptized and did it for the wrong reason. Could have been because your friends were doing it, so it just seemed like the right thing to do. Or your parents were getting on your case and trying to coerce you and make you, and just to get them off your back, I'm just going to get baptized because I'm tired of hearing about it. Or maybe you wanted to be in one of the ministries in the church, playing instruments, speak, do stuff. You know you got to be baptized to, to be in the ministry, so you did it for that. And for those of you that fall into this category, you need to be truly baptized. Because if there's not an inward change that's taking place, when you go down in the water, you come up the same way. You don't leave the sinful nature behind. It comes right back up with you. And the only thing that's different about you is you are wet. That's it. That's it. You're wet. If that's you, you need to be baptized. Others among us have been baptized, and when you did it, you knew what you were doing, and it was a sincere thing that you did. And somewhere along the way, you strayed, and you went back into the world. You forsook Yeshua. You don't need to be rebaptized. You need simply to repent. You need simply to repent, and he will restore you. He will regenerate that spirit all over again. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be rebaptized. Re now, young ones who haven't made the choice, I'm not done with you. I'm about to close, but I'll leave you with this. A lot of the kids that I talk to, I say, why haven't you gotten baptized? And this is what they say. I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. And I'll say, basically what you're saying, without saying, because when I say this, you'll be like, that's not what they're saying, but that's what they're saying with their actions, is you're saying that there's things that I don't want to let go of. See, I'm not ready to give it all up. If I, if I do that, I'm going to have to live this holy life. I'm not going to have any more fun. See, there's too many pleasures of sin that I still want to engage in. I'm still young and youthful. Maybe when I get old, I'll do that. But right now, I'm just not ready. That's what they're saying. But I want you guys to recognize and understand that that is the flesh rolling in you. The flesh don't want to die. The flesh is like, don't do that, because we ain't going to be able to do this and this and this. Don't do it. That's the flesh, and that's the very thing that we are trying to get rid of. The flesh having rule over your life. I'm just not ready. This is what I have to say to that. Today, you say, I'm not ready. You say it very casually, very nonchalantly, very matter-of-factly. I'm just not ready. Like it's not a big deal. And Yeshua is saying to you, my child, my child, I love you. I made a way for us to be together for all eternity. I made a way for you to have everlasting life and not be subject to the penalty of the wages of sin. I made a way. All you got to do is accept me and enter into what I have for you. And you say, I'm not ready. But will you be just as matter of fact, just as casual, just as nonchalant and quick to say, I'm not ready when he comes again. Think about that. Scripture commands that we believe, accept, confess, repent, be baptized into the body of Yeshua. And why do we get baptized? 
because he said so. Amen.